cooperative spirit here is really wonderful and the teachers help each other a lot. The staff that we have here, all our teachers are excellent and just the programs that we offer within our classroom. The parents are so involved, we have a lot of programs um, that they work together with us on. I think what makes Columbia so unique is the fact that we have such a commitment between teachers and parents. We have parents who really care what their children are doing and you spend a lot of time doing parent conferences not just to discuss the children but to discuss the program and how we can make it better. I think what's special about Columbia Elementary School is we are uh, a real community school. Um, community meaning not only do we involve children and staff in activities, we involve parents and we involve members of the community who have children who don't attend Columbia. We are a K to 5 elementary school. We have about 420 children, um, but I really think that we want to look at 420 individuals and that is challenging because we tend to think in group, um, but it is a goal to really think of every child as an individual and if they have special needs of any kind that in some way, uh, even though it may be small, we will address their individual need. I think an overall philosophy that, that comes from everyone at Columbia is a real believing that every child can succeed and um, we will put in place whatever support systems that are necessary to see that that happens. Thimble Theater. Thomas Jefferson Buddies will be here today. Please come to the cafeteria at 2.15 if you have a buddy. Signing off and wishing you a great day. At Columbia, the Cougar Kindness Award was established to point students in the right direction by identifying role models for desirable behavior. You have to be in a right, real nice to um, get the Cougar Kindness Award and respect and help others. Every quarter of the year your class votes for the person they think is the nicest person in the class. If you get voted then they put your picture in the showcase in the lobby. You also get a certificate and a pen. My class voted for me for me for being honest, respectful, and helpful. People re look up to me, and they'll know that if like they need help with something, if it's not like a test or anything, then they can ask me, and I'll help them. And also that they will respect me and feel good. They won't think that I'll start to yell at them if they do something wrong. My class selected me for Cougar Kindness Award and some of, the class, some of my classmates said I was helpful, respectful, and considerate. And I really enjoy getting this award because now people look up to me and respect me more. I was chosen for Cougar Kindness because I was polite, thoughtful, and I don't interrupt. My family is proud of me that I won Cougar Kindness, and I'm also glad too. And I'll continue to be nice and kind and not mean and nasty. My classmates elected me for Cougar Kindness because I was helpful, honest, and funny. It makes me, it also makes me feel good because my friends in class, in class like what I'm good at doing. Occasionally, student behavior is put to the test. Presenting to you the skit Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. The purpose of the skit is to sh show you how peer mediation can help you solve conflicts. Watch how Red Riding Hood and the Wolf resolve their differences. Right now, we're working as a school on character education. 
and our focus this month is on respect. Peer mediation is a program that we have set up and fourth and fifth graders go through a training um, to become mediators and what they do is they're taught um, steps to take in solving conflicts and that way it takes it away from being um, an adult or teacher who um, is always jumping in and, and telling students what to do and how to solve their problems. It's teaching them to internalize it and to solve problems on their own and so therefore they, they're going to peers to help them with their conflicts. Then the mediators um, become like um, role models and they, it gives them a leadership role. You were taking some, you were taking some food to your grandmother on the other side of the woods, and and the wolf appeared from behind a tree and frightened you. Yes, that's what happened. Okay. Remember, wolf and Red Riding Hood, you're you're angry too because we want to show that that when you come, like if it's a real conflict, the people that are going to come in to mediation are are probably very angry. And not so these were selected students um, who are going to perform a skit for the school to teach the, the students in the school about what mediation is about and um, what actually will happen when they come to peer mediation. There were two students who acted as mediators um, and then two um, characters who were actually in the conflict and one is Red Riding Hood and the other is the Wolf. So they're, it's a play off of, taken off of the story of Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. Achieving success takes the right attitude. That's something all fourth and fifth graders at Columbia are learning. Uh, our play is really to in, in, uh, reinforce the five values that our school has made up uh, through the course of the year to emphasize um, respect, uh, patience, kindness, honesty, and responsibility. And um, the kids in the plays through songs and uh, a portrait of a story uh, emphasize these values. When we present this production, it's also done with the PE department so that we incorporate rhythmic activities along with it and also part of the PE program of studies is linked with the music program of studies that we do units together in this particular production that we do every year. As far as the music aspects of this particular production that we did this time, the children start out early in the year with the written music in their hands. And they begin by learning the various theory techniques that are involved in the music, such as the note reading uh, skills and uh, theory, time signatures, things like that. After we do that, we work on dynamics. Then after we do that, the children actually put the music away and we work on memory skills. So they're doing all of this before they ever come to the stage or to the risers. Uh, I can come up with, with different types of movement and working along with Mrs. Jones, we can see how they fit with the music. And what, whatever comes up that looks good, we will uh, work First, with uh, just move, movement without the music with the kids, and then we will try and put the kids together using it with music. Just as music and physical education can be merged together, so can other areas of study. This morning I did an integrated language arts lesson where I was integrating our language arts with a unit on nutrition that children had been learning about uh, the food pyramid and the food groups that make up the food pyramid and I designed a lesson where they would have to work cooperatively on a project after hearing a story 
um, a fictional story based on uh, an animal that was a terrible eater and they had to uh, design a meal, a lunch or a dinner with a partner that would include foods from the five nutritious food groups. Pasta. Which food group would this go into? And I do want you to come up very carefully and put it on our chart. Diana. Uh, for one thing, it, it makes it everything a little more interesting when you, you don't uh, segment all the different subject areas. And it lets children see the real world. We don't segment our world into, uh, we're going to do a little math here, and we're going to be talking here. Our, our world is very integrated. And so I like to present uh, the curriculum in the same way. Hot dogs for breakfast, hot dogs for lunch, hot dogs, hot dogs, all in a bunch. I have been teaming with Mrs. Ramage uh, for a while, working with her on her units, and I come in and do a, a certain segment uh, to uh, support her in her classroom language arts program. Reading specialist, um, that's the person who is quite involved in the whole school. I work in all of the classrooms with all of the teachers. Sometimes uh, I work with the, the whole class to model a lesson, or I might pull a small group and work with them on specific skills, or a group that might need enrichment. All right, let's read the words, class. Cheese, please. Is there another word that rhymes with cheese and please? I also um, have programs that I sponsor, like the Bear Boot Club, which is a parent volunteer program, where and they come in and read with boys and girls, and then they give them the books and they take them home. And the Senior Citizens Program, a community program where senior citizens come in once a week and listen to the boys and girls read, and they uh, also get enjoyment out of it themselves. Columbia is fortunate to have volunteers throughout the school. We have a lot of parent volunteers during our work time. It's a wonderful community for parent volunteers. They work with the children on reading, they work with the children at crafts tables. If you need them to work one-on-one, -on -one, they're always available. Um, the afternoon class had so many volunteers that we had to take turns. <laughs> Nice problem to have. My aide and I can be working with uh, a small group while the parent is working with a small group. And it gives more personal attention to the children. Uh, we've just recently begun using the Waterford Early Reading Program. Uh, it's a program that uses both phonics and meaningful text to teach kindergartners how to read and how to learn the alphabet to start with. And using rhyming and other uh, phonics skills, they print lots of little books of that they've rather invented and have a great time doing it while they're learning. The capital letter A makes the sound A. Ah. A ah is the first sound you hear in antelope, anteater, apple. We have three computers and they work off a master station so that it not only has the children working, it's doing assessment at the same time that we can print out later. There are 800 programs in there. It does change uh, what it comes up with the next time according to what they did the last time. So after the first few days, the children are not on the same page. Do you know what a slideshow is, Chris? Yeah, it's kind of like a movie, okay? So we're going to try to make the movie out of the volcanoes with each one of your pictures. But to do that, first we have to save it to disk. So have we worked with that yet? The computer lab was newly renovated with our renovation money, and it is the first year this year is when we have all the Macs up there and have opened it up to the students. Um, today we had fourth and fifth graders, and the fourth graders were doing a project that they had worked on where they had created a volcano, drawn it in a paint program, and then cut and pasted it into a word processing program, and typed in some facts about it. And today's project was to go ahead and save to disk their volcano, put them all together into a slideshow. And then they could record a sound or use a pre-recorded sound. And so today what they did was they recorded one of the facts that they had found out and researched on volcanoes. I want to go. I
Did you guys, do you think you put it do in a like different folder? Volcanoes have well, like many more events than they have countries. Well, volcanoes have many more events than one. They have Whatever. Volcanoes have many more events than one. Volcanoes are large events in the earth. If you read the first question, it says, who gives the web tour of the White House? So where do you think we're going first? The White House. For the fifth grade class today was um, the first time that we did it as a group where they uh, surfed the internet. And today we were just trying to get them um, aware of the different places they could go and how quickly they could move from one area to another. Uh, it was the very beginning stages of it. We need to focus, after today we're going to focus in on how they search and how, how they do search engine, use the search engines for their projects in class. But today was more of just a fun introduction. On today's lesson, the reason that we weren't using all of the computers was because of this, the time in the day that we were trying to access the internet, it's very busy. And, and with us trying to get out of the building with 20 computers, um, it clogs it up and makes everything a lot slower. And so we were working with partners. Um, if we were working on any other project, then each, per, each child would have their own computer, and that allows me to know that they, can, they understand what I'm saying and that they're following the lesson because I can, I can see on their screen what they've done. They learn so quickly, and they just, they, they love it. They haven't set up the walls that we have as adults to be scared of the computer, to be scared to learn the new things. They just, it doesn't matter to them why it works. It just works. And, and they accept that and go on, and they just, their creativity, they just can move very quickly on the computer with it. While the internet has become a modern search tool, the library is still the primary source for access to information. Okay, you have one minute. Walk. Bring me a book with that call number on it. My philosophy with teaching children the library skills is to try and make it fun. I want the library to be a place, the media center to be a place the children enjoy coming to visit and to find success in getting what they want to accomplish accomplished. I give them a call number to look up. Sometimes I say it aloud and most of the time I do say it aloud to them when they come individually and ask for a book because um, they need to, to be able to respond to an oral instruction. And I gave them also a written piece of paper today because children learn in different ways. So you have the oral and you have the visual. The beep is sounding. I want you to take a book that's right in front of you and bring it here. If you're really close, you can get a point for it. The uh, nice fallout from that kind of a lesson is they get into a different section of the media center than they're usually in. Some of the students found books in the other section they wanted to check out. So right after the lesson, they came over and said, can I have this book, can I have that book? Also use another technique in the lessons is having a group answer the question, like where would you go for 900 section, so that it's sort of called dipsticking. You want to see how many students know where to go, and it helps those who don't know how to uh, respond. The library also was an important resource for a fourth grade social studies activity. Sometimes they would use human hair to strengthen their fabric. They were often to dye their clothing and also use fruit, flowers, and berries to add color to their clothing. Fourth grade students learn about Virginia history. And in this case, they were learning Chapter 3, which is Native Americans of Virginia. A lot of students do not come to fourth grade with prior knowledge about Indians of Virginia. They know a lot about Plains Indians, but they don't particularly know a lot about the Indians who actually lived in Virginia. Uh, Sarah, you want to show some things that you made? Um, this is a dress that Indian lady would wear. Um, it would look like this, and then they would have jewelry on it. They would wear jewelry that looks like this sometimes, and they were called um, fetish necklaces. 
and they have and, then, and they have rocks on them. This activity is called a jigsaw. The students are broken up into groups, different topics that have to do with Native Americans of Virginia. For example, uh, one group is the people group, one group is the homes group, the weapons, Powhatan, food. And what they do is they learn with their group about these different topics. A lot of the information was provided for them and a lot of the information they had to look up for themselves. And then, and during the jigsaw activity, they split up each person from that group. For example, the people group goes to another group and explains to them about the people group and then answers their questions. Students learn in different ways. Some students learn because they hear it. Some students learn because they read it. Some students learn because they've done the learning themselves, they've looked it up, and a lot of students, when they go ahead and say the information, when they actually present it, it makes it more permanent for them. They have more ownership over the information, and fourth grade is a transition year. They're moving from primary to upper elementary, and it's a little more responsibility. The, the textbook is uh, significant content area reading, and this gives the students a chance to shine in ways other than typical textbook activities. Another thing is they're going to be doing group speaking, group activities throughout the rest of their careers in school. And in fact, when they're employees, chances are that they're going to be working with a group of people. There are certain group dynamics, even in fourth grade, that they're starting to get used to, uh, how to do a group project, how to come up with a product, um, how to make sure that everybody contributes in the group. And this way, the students are beginning to learn a skill that will last them, hopefully, through the rest of their school careers. In this third grade class, social studies is integrated with language arts to get double duty out of the lesson time. I am sorry, he said. I have no beautiful thing to show you. Ah, you are wrong, my son, the king said. My whole lesson was based around an integrated theme, and it was to set up a purpose for reading within the students' curriculum. It was based around China as the main theme and pulling in and integrating both language arts and social studies at the same time. Thus, we had a guided reading lesson and a spelling lesson where we pulled out spelling words from the literature which went along with our Chinese theme. About maybe about this little girl? Do you think it's going to tell about her life in China? What do you think? I think it's going to be about her family and where she lives and the things that she does. Right. Guided reading is when the teacher will set up the purpose for the book, get the children excited about reading the book, introducing them to the title, the cover page, the pictures, the vocabulary, letting them see words which would not be familiar, look them up in the dictionary as a resource, and then let them read silently, and after all of that background knowledge is given to them, they'll find the reading easier and more meaningful. For the spelling activity, there were word patterns. Uh, one pattern was the ING. Also, we had words where you had to double the consonants and then add ED or ING. Um, that was a little bit harder for the children, but I think they are beginning to understand that patterning. They, at this age, seem to me to be so enthusiastic about what they do that you are constantly challenged to be very creative, keeping up with their interests, making them even more motivated to learn. Bounce it high, bounce it low, bounce it to the one you know. Language arts can also be integrated with music, as with this second grade class. Today, the boys and girls in my second grade music class 
did a review lesson with rhythm by bouncing balls. We had already previously learned songs. In addition to us doing that review lesson with bouncing balls, we also incorporated right some literary techniques such as discovery of rhyming words and how they fit in with musical songs and how we can be creative and actually uh, use a little bit of our creative uh, thought to make a song that we like. We decided to use a humorous song and we picked animals as the subject of our song. In the process of this lesson, we incorporated nouns, verbs, uh, talked about action words, and the children were able to interact with each other, work together as partners. They were able to feel the beat. They were able to show the beat. They were able to uh, use different parts of their body uh, in a movement activity, and uh, they showed many cooperative skills also. Enero. Maria, ¿qué mes? At Columbia, there are many opportunities for enrichment outside the normal school day or outside the school building itself. We have a variety of before and after school programs. Um, foreign language is a large program for Columbia. Um, Spanish classes and French classes are offered both before and after school for children. For the first time, we have an art class being offered. Um, and it is offered through the county and it is housed here. It is taught by one of our parents. And um, since it is a county program, a Fairfax County program, offering anyone can sign up. So we not only have students participating in that class, we also have parents participating in that class. And that is um, after school, Wednesdays and Thursdays. One very important um, focus at Columbia is in the area of the arts. Our partnership is with George Mason Institute of the Arts, and we do a number of activities throughout the year with George Mason. Um, students um, who are in the theater arts program come to Columbia and work with students at Columbia. We've had opportunities to go and uh, participate as a, the audience in dress rehearsals. We also focus on the visual arts. Every class in the building this year will be attending the Corcoran um, to look at the gallery as well as participate in a workshop. And I think that the participation of uh, parents has really allowed us this extra activity. And children have um, gained a wealth of information and experiences from that. I think the favorite part of my job every day is in the morning, first thing, and last thing in the afternoon. And that's when I greet children in the morning. And, um, and I usually say something like, happy Monday or have a great day. And then when they're leaving in the afternoon to see them, to see them leaving with big smiles and um, bye and I'll see you tomorrow. And I get lots of hugs as they come in and out of the building. And, and that truly is the favorite part of my job. Yeah.